going to take you through a study that we're going to call Legally Restrained. It's a dialogue between Valerie Walker Dine's book, Counting Girls Out, and Robert Lutek's Legally Blonde, the 2001 film. So we'd like to run through some main ideas for you before we share our film. The first main idea is that girls do not underperform boys. But this is a myth that has been perpetuated by schools, by teachers, and even by textbook companies. But what data has found, and what these studies that Walker Dunn conducted found, was that girls do not actually underperform boys. They're just not encouraged as much as boys to follow a certain path, particularly with math and science. Our second main idea, which we'll focus on in our film, is that boys' knowledge is considered valid, whereas girls' knowledge has to be explained. Throughout case studies in the book Counting Girls Out, Walker Dunn explores this a little bit further and even interviews teachers and observes them to see how they refer to boys and girls who are performing. Girls who are performing well always had to have their performance quantified and explained. Uh, so whether it was that they were hard working, um, whether it was that they uh, were good with organization, that was how they were performing this task. Whereas the boys, they would be seen as quite bright, they would be seen as having flair, having ability, their performance is never as much quantified. And we see also in the movie Legally Blonde, when Al Woods is applying to Harvard, some people are shocked, and especially they don't value her GPA as she doesn't see well as a fashion major. And why is that? Why are we valuing some knowledge over others? And we'll explore that more. The third main idea that we'll be exploring is the burden of emotional responsibility and how that lies on the female. And in Walker Dines Counting Girls Out, there's two distinct times where we talk about this emotional burden that's placed on females. One case study is when she interviews female teachers and sees how, she really interviews them about how their emotional burden is coming out of the classroom. Another case study is when she interviews and observes mothers of four year old children and sees how they are expected. Um, if they want to be a good mother, to instill uh, this emotional responsibility in their young. Also, in the film, Elle, when she's applying to college, does not really have that supportive of a mother. But then we see it is the female professor who picks up the emotional slack and convinces her to stay at Harvard and follow her dreams. Another main theme has to do with gender itself. And what we wanted to bring out is that gender is not a constant oppression, but it is a constant struggle. And we see this in several case studies in the book. There's one particular case study where girls are, young girls are trying to change playtime, and they're trying to change it to playing house. Because that was where they saw strong, dominant female roles. So even there, we see this idea of struggle. We see them trying to change the playtime to uh, venues that they might have more support, that they might have um, stronger opinions being heard. Also, later on, we see that many of the girls, especially the middle class girls, they're never quite sure if they are good enough. They are expected to do good, and they don't see the praise that boys are seeing for doing the same work. This was leading to a lot of anxiety that the young girls were having. And finally, in the film Legally Blonde, we see that Elle Woods, even though she's gotten into Harvard, even though she's been accepted, she still questions herself, and there are still people around her who question whether she's good enough to be at Harvard. Our last main argument is that class has a bigger effect on performance than gender. And in one particular case study uh, to which Walker Dine created the table, you can clearly see here there's, um, there's a section for test scores, a section for middle class girls, and a section for working class girls. And even the top performing working class girl is below almost all of the, the middle class girls. Also, only the middle class girls have access to private schooling education. This theme comes out in Legally Blonde as well, because as Elle is applying to Harvard, she does a video essay, and we can see a lot of the signs of wealth. She grew up in Bel Air, she grows up in a mansion, her parents have a lot of money and resources. Her admissions video is directed by a Coppola, so she has a lot of economic and cultural capital. And we explore this question of, do you think that Elle would have gotten into Harvard if she didn't have all of this wealth? All of these themes were present in the film Legally Blonde. And our goal was to really pull out the themes of the book and show how they were present in the film. 
but we might not get to all of them in the movie that you're about to view. So please reference our viewing guide so that if you watch Legally Blonde on your own, you can have a reflection on how these themes are present. We have suggested that within current school mathematics, certain fantasies, fears, and desires invest man with omnipotent control of a calculable universe, which at the same time covers a desperate fear of desiring the other, woman. The need to prove girls' mathematical inferiority is not motivated by a certainty, but by a terror of loss. In this story, these fantasies, fears, and desires become the forces that produce the actual effectiveness of the construction of fact and of current discursive practices. Oh, is this low viscosity rayon? Uh, yes, of course. With a half loop top stitching on the hem? Absolutely, it's one of a kind. It's impossible to use a half loop top stitching on low viscosity rayon. It would snag the fabric. And you didn't just get it in. I saw it in the June book a year ago. So if you're trying to sell it to me for full price, you picked the wrong girl. Harvard Law School? Three? But that's a top three school. Oh, I have a 4.0. Yes. But your major is fashion merchandising. Harvard won't be impressed that you aced history of polka dots. Did you know when he first applied? He got waitlisted. What? His father had to make a call. You're kidding. <laughs> Come on, you're never gonna get the grace to qualify for one of those spots. You're not smart enough, sweetie. Wait, am I on glue or did we not get into the same law school, Warner? Yeah, but... But what? We took the same LSATs, and we're taking the same classes. I know. But come on, Elle, be serious. You can do something more valuable with your time. I'm never going to be good enough for you, am I? If teachers invest boys with invisible capacities and deny that they see such capacities in girls, there is again no simple empirical real for us to find. Instead, we find fictions, fantasies, splittings, and everywhere sexual difference. No matter how well their mothers prepared them, this is what girls have to face. They may manifest the same behaviors as boys until they are blue in the face, but they will never mean the same thing. If they are independent, they will be a madam. If they are strong, they will be selfish.
law school? It's a perfectly respectable place, Daddy. Honey, you were first runner-up at the Miss Hawaiian Tropics contest. Why are you going to throw that all away? Going to Harvard is the only way I'm going to get the love of my life back. Oh, sweetheart, you don't need law school. Law school's for people who are boring and ugly and serious. And you button that. None of those things. is blonde hair and big boobs. No one's ever going to take me seriously. People at law school don't. Warner doesn't. I don't even think my own parents take me seriously. <sighs> the hell with law school. I just wanted to say goodbye. If you're going to let one stupid prick ruin your life, You're not the girl I thought you were. Sun's up, it's a little after 12. Make breakfast for myself, leave the work for someone else. 